This EU duo just traveled the whole way from Poland to NA and they managed to win their very first tournament. They beat out pros like Clicks and Epic, Peter Ball and Poyo, Eomzo and Rise, and Acorn and Colt on their very first tournament, which is absolutely insane. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything they did to win. All of the strats they're using, every single different technique and tactic they're using to take heights, as well as everything you guys need to have a better week two of FNCS if you're looking to perform. Let's get straight into this. One of the most underrated skills in Fortnite is knowing when to jump out of the bus. So as you can see, this player looks like they're using a drop map. They've got a very good drop for their spot. However, the key thing is they jumped out of the bus too late. They're moving around in the air, and that means they get absolutely smoked on the drop by our EU duo who won NA Opens, Paco and Mixon. These guys have an absolute solid idea of what they're doing. These guys land straight on the barrels and they immediately get a very quick loot advantage on anybody near them, which allows them never to die a spawn, which is really important in Opens. You waste a game of spawn, it completely messes up your mentality and it can easily lead you to throwing more games by just W King unnecessarily mid game. These guys try to play out every single game to the best of their ability and never take any unnecessary risks with their fighting as well. So here I've drawn out all three different ways these players drop out of the bus. So as you can see, the first one is too early. That player is spending too long gliding in and this means that they're missing out on that crucial time where the bus is moving extremely quickly and they can get closer to their marker. Mixon and Paco's drop is absolutely perfect. They chose the correct marker to hit and exactly when to jump out of the bus. And the last one, this one is too slow as you can see. This player, they're staying in the bus too long. They're not choosing the optimal marker. And of course, this means that they're gonna be way behind on hitting that perfect drop. The reason why learning how to jump out the bus is so important is because the situation's just like this when you're contested. However, if you out drop the other team, you're gonna be able to quickly get a loot advantage. This other team is trying something cheeky where one of them lands back and the other one lands to cut off the loot. However, what is gonna happen here is Paco and Mix are gonna realize this, know that they have a very quick loot advantage. They're both gonna get spray weapons straight off the bat. Paco gets a shotgun and they immediately rush over to get that 1v2 straight in before the teammate can even come over and help. This is the reason why these guys are so consistent as off spawn it's just these small advantages they're able to create by out dropping other teams and using that advantage straight away before the other team can catch up one of the best ways to get better at fighting in duos is make sure you're both approaching from slightly different angles, but you're trying to limit space without risking 50-50s. Never get directly on a wall. Paco does this really nicely here. He's pressuring from a whole tile away and limiting their space out. So you can see he's just placing these walls, limiting this team's ability to rebox out that way. And now he's going to swap up his angle again and approach from this long side. And very nicely here, as both of these guys are limiting the space, Mixon's playing from above, Paco's playing from this long angle where he can't get boxed. Now these guys are going to commit in together. Take a look. They're both playing together. They're both replacing on the same angle, which means if this team was to open up an edit, they'd immediately be able to get more damage in return and win that 50-50. It makes it impossible to counter if the team getting pressured. Now that the team starts panicking, they're getting all their space cut off. They rebox, but they only have one box that they can get into, as you can see here. Everything else has been cut off. All of these side walls, Paco's. So what Paco does really nicely, he pressures, swaps up the angle again, not getting directly on the wall where he can get 50-50 and jumped on. Instead, he builds a full box out to the side, comes in from the back as Mixon goes in from the front, and he's able to get the opening knock and end the fight very quickly. And that's how these guys consistently get a lot of kills when they're trying to WK. They just simply limit space, and it doesn't take too much fighting skill to do this. You just need to limit space and not get 50 50 and you're going to be winning much more of your fights. Again, one of the easiest ways of getting more kills in opens is just always having set roles in your fights. So right here, what Paco's going to be doing in this fight is he's going to be the one approaching from above, cutting off space. So as you can see, he's going to be building all around above, making sure these guys can't come out. He's getting the double edits. He's getting all these extra builds around them, making it very awkward for these guys, and it forces them in to start panicking. And while he's doing this, what Mixon's doing is he's very safely approaching from the wall. As you can see, he's not directly on the wall, right? He's not standing in this box you're placing. Instead, he's got this safety wall he can reset. He's going to be smacking on it pressuring this other team sliding builds in basically making these guys panic and this means that both of these players attention is drawn to the person who's fighting them directly who's able to get free damage and this allows Paco to very simply come in the back get the opening knock with his shotgun and now these guys are going to end this fight super quick again fighting in opens doesn't take too much skill in my opinion it's all about just approaching correctly especially when you spot a bad team just boxed up one of the biggest reasons for these guys success in the high elo games especially is they do not waste anything during mid game as you can see here, they're very cautiously just boxed up. They've got a massive surge base. They've refarmed all of their mats and they're in a very good position for these later partial zones and they can easily rotate from this position. You guys need to get out of the habit of just taking unnecessary dumb fights that you don't need and scuffing yourself during mid games. Try to maintain as stacked as possible using all of your heals as well as having as many mats as possible as well as just making the most smart rotates you can possibly. Like right here, these guys go fully towards the dead side. They get into a completely free position for themselves and they're gonna have a really solid game 
just from having good mid-game fundamentals. All right, let's take a look at how they rotate the partial zones next. Two of the biggest mistakes I see people making the whole time in FNTS is first of all, not refarming. You guys should always be trying to refarm, especially a wooden brick wherever possible, as long as you're doing it safely, right? Just get a quick refarm in whenever you can, especially whenever you box up, whenever you're mid-moving, always try to refarm when you can. And secondly, is not going early to these partial zones. I see so many people doing this. They decide to late rotate on a max distance partial zone, either the 6th, the 7th, or even the 8th zone as well. They late rotate and it gets them killed. However, Mix and Apaco do this really well. Every single game, they rotate as early as possible, get themselves into a good established position where they can't get lobby focus. And in this game, they're deciding really smart, just wasting a bit of mats, building around and actually going out of zone just so they can look for a kill backside. You guys don't need to just fully W key to get kills. You can easily set up in good positions to get hold kills, especially if you're rotating early and having smart rotates. So now, as you can see, these guys are going to set up this nice peak and they're going to look for a team that's last second rotating, either fighting backside or just foot rotating backside. And especially since there's only Fizz to rotate with, it is very easy to get these hold kills on teams. As you can see, they set up right here with the sniper. They spot a solo rotating a little bit split from his duo, get the opening headshot snipe and then use the dash water that they tapped earlier to get straight onto the body, get a max refresh. And now these guys are insanely stacked for the rest of the game. Then straight after getting this refresh, instead of going back to that old box that they have in zone, what they do here is really smart is they try to access the dead side of this partial zone. So the part that's just pulled half out, as you can see, they're going to build, get over to it as much as possible. And this means that they're in a much freer position to rotate where possible. I can't tell you guys how strong dead side is this season, especially with no mobility and people just late fizz rotating. If you can get yourself into dead side, you're going to find a lot more kills. You're going to find a lot more easy free rotates like right here. These guys just have a really simple rotate into the zone. And of course, they're an insanely good position on mats. If you look at everybody else in the lobby, they're a lot more stacked than them. This right here is a very common rotate that you guys are going to have. It's on this eight zone. As you can see, there is an absolute load of players that need to rotate in. And what most of these players opt to do is either rotate early and get themselves and then tarp in the zone, or they decide to go in the middle of timing and try to get in. And it's very risky to go late because, of course, all these players are going to be boxed in the zone. They're going to be spraying you and they make it your life very challenging. So what these guys decide to do is they save their dashes up until this point and they just waste both their dashes. I'd really recommend not doing a fizz rotate on this. It's very likely you die, mainly because there's probably a team behind you that's going to be shooting you in the back. There's probably a team in front of you or a team to the side that could be shooting you. Instead, just waste your dashes, especially if you've got them. These guys use all of their dashes as well as waste a lot of wood getting himself towards the dead side of this eight zone, exactly like those previous zones. As you can see, they get down here towards dead side and they're actually gonna be in this position where they keep going into dead side and they're gonna get a first moving pull here that works out really favorably for them. Again, do not be afraid to waste your resources, waste your mats, waste some of your utility items to rotate like the dashes. You can easily get in a position where you're able to find a kill, get stacked if you just waste a little bit in the short term now the key reason why i'm recommending that you guys be very cautious on these partial and these eight zone rotates like building a lot of boxes using a lot of heals a lot of time is mainly because if you get yourself into the end of this eight zone you're guaranteed to have a good point game regardless and you can oftentimes find a kill very easily how these guys do this in this game right here is they whack on a pre-edit on a team that's fighting so they're looking for a team that is box fighting holding people backstorm they've gone a little bit deeper in and this means that with that pre-edit they're going to pull tarp over cover all the angles no unnecessary risk and get a very nice simple opening kill on the solo they're not going to agree trying to trace the other one instead they're just going to throw the body back get it into their full tarp that they've got going back here and they're both going to be in an extremely strong position map wise get a couple of gun upgrades as well and now these guys are set off for success for the rest of this game as well if you guys are interested in doing better in this fncs as well as get lifetime access and free updates for all future fncs's go check out the fncs mascots there's over 150 videos and the things that you learn inside will drastically help you get better at duos and perform better in fncs so many players already just from week one have made it out of opens for the first time a lot of players even who never made out of opens have made it to their very first finals which is absolutely ridiculous. Go check it out now. I guarantee you, you'll get a lot of results with this masterclass. All right, so now we are into first moving and take a look at how Mixon and Paco play this game out. First of all, is they pre-tarp a little bit. I can't tell you guys how important a little bit of pre-tarping is, specifically so these guys are now on the same layer as this other team, which means they're not just jumping straight into this other team's crosshairs or this team's crosshairs when they do leave their box. It allows them a bit of visibility, a little bit of extra height to just scout around and spot things as well as just have a clean and rotate now as moving starts closing in you can see 32 up right here pretty stacked game these guys are going to use their fizz and they're going to look to keep on playing this high mid ground start i'd really recommend in fncs you guys just stick to high mid ground it's so much easier to be consistent and allows you a lot more different plays that you can go for 
as you can see, they get to a high layer, they build a two by one, they're gonna refizz and then take a look at this play they do. They spot height isn't very well connected. There's nobody on height connecting to front side and these guys aren't well connected at the back. So they very simply block off their back angle first, which is really smart. It means that nobody can run over their head and get shots on them as they're doing this dropout play. Then they break out height. And really crucially, whenever you try to go for any type of height play, the most important thing to look for all the time is a damage advantage in this situation right here. So as you can see, they get this massive beam, they get one of them white, and they're immediately gonna refizz, as you can see, and just full send up on height. They know they've got one of them white, they know that height team's gonna be low. And now with that damage advantage, all they need to do is get up and over the high ground player. So as you can see, he's like quite packed Swaps to metal, jumps up and over the high ground player who's got caught completely unaware. This guy's got no idea what's going on. He doesn't even realize he's lost high ground. And very crucially, as he does this, Paco keeps on staying above. And while he's doing this, Mixon looks for a tiny bit of damage. He gets a little bit of awareness check on that guy, gets a little bit of damage, and then cranks up. And now these guys are fully established. One's playing backside and one's playing front side on height. Let's go take a look at how they take height in second moving in this other game that they won as well. This right here is a really solid height take you can do, especially in opens. It works really well. So what these guys do very simply is they get a bit of info on where height is, what height's doing, and then as zone is about to swap from first moving into second moving, very simply, they just fizz and crank up. They pull moving zone here, and they're just gonna go ahead, tarp, look up at height, and then just crank straight up really simple what's going to happen is the height team is going to be busy maybe shooting people or maybe looking for a refresh or something as zone swaps and you're able to just go up completely for free on the front side just make sure you get above the other team don't fight the other team just get above them with the fizz effect especially if you used it one second before you're going to have it before they're ready to get up and now these guys very simply both use a banana so they can sprint towards front side not take any fall as well as get that speed boost effect in case somebody was to try to take height off them they'd have that speed boost jump effect to stay above them and now these guys have got a really solid height hold that allows them to win this game and the last way that these guys take height is one of the most easy ways to do, especially in a dead lobby. It's just full sending height in the end of first moving. So what these guys do is they try to be the first team into the end of first moving, as you can see here. They use the dashes from the underworld water. They crank up. Mixin is going to slide up and then 180 looking for damage. And while he's doing this, Paco does a really nice play, which is tanking Storm, building metal, getting himself even higher up on this elevation of the hill. And these guys are both able to take height as well as get a massive amount of white damage on the other team that was trying to play height, which means that they have got high ground completely for free right now. Again, in opens, guys, you don't need to overcomplicate your games. Just play nice high layers. Try to go for height when it looks free and make sure mid games are solid and you're gonna have the best chance possible for qualifying.